2018 induction ceremony dinner banquet for the Pickleball Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. We're here to honor three great, passionate, moving people that helped grow the sport of Pickleball to the point where we are at today. That would be Mayor Earl Hill. Joining Earl tonight are his wife, Gladys, and two of their daughters, Darla Sauter and Dana Gates. Earl, all of you stand up. Show, show everybody how beautiful your family is. Let me tell you about Mr. Earl Hill. Earl was born in Saskatchewan, Canada, where he fell in love with and married his wife, Gladys. In the mid-60s, Earl and Gladys moved to Washington State, where Earl began a 38-year stint in the banking industry, the last few years as, as a district manager. While a position like that would keep most people very busy, that was not enough for Earl. During his time in Washington, Earl achieved the life master designation as a duplicate bridge player, plus was the Kiwanis District Governor and did a charity walk of 300 miles from Buckley, Washington to Spokane. In addition to all of that, in his pre pickleball life, Earl climbed Mount Rainier four times, once as the leader of the climb, climbed Ayana Potosi, that's really tough for an Oklahoma boy to say, well, thanks, in South America, and all 19,341 feet of Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Again, for most people, these achievements I just described would have been enough, but not for Earl. In the mid-1980s, Earl uh, was infected with a life-increasing virus called pickleball. <laughs> Earl jumped into his new passion with both feet, and uh, you still have a trouble with that kitchen thing in the feet. <laughs> One of the pickle first things, first pickleball things Earl did uh, was get involved in the Arizona Senior Olympics. His title was Arizona Senior Olympic Pickleball Commissioner. During 2004, Earl called a meeting of the players interested in forming a national pickleball body. He called the group the Arizona Accord. The mission of that group was to promote pickleball and define and adopt official rules. While Earl's group did not end up being the governing body of pickleball, it was definitely the precursor to the formation of USA Pickleball Association in 2005. Earl was a charter member of the USAPA board, founded the ambassador program, served as the director for 14 years and provided support, guidance, and encouragement to those of us who followed in his footsteps as ambassador chair. His vision of how to grow the sport was to find enthusiastic players who would start games in their home communities. And look what happened. The USAPA has approximately 1,700 ambassadors spreading the greatness of this sport. And now other countries are copying this ambassador program to grow pickleball in their own countries. The sport is exploding. And Earl, it's all your fault. <laughs> Earl has shoeboxes full of medals that attest to his pickleball prowess, but is most proud of his four gold medals won at USAPA national tournaments. Earl, everyone here will be forever indebted to your, to your incredible, to you and your incredible commitment to this sport that we all love. 
Please join me on stage so I can be the first to congratulate you on your induction into the 2018 Pickleball Hall of Fame. And I also want to thank uh, all my associates who have supported my nomination, and uh, as well as the program directors and the other leaders in the USAPA, whom I've had the pleasure of working with. I am indeed grateful for this recognition. Uh, it was my wife Gladys over here that you was introduced that uh, first gave me the idea to get this into the. Arizona Senior Olympics, she came home from playing golf one day in the Arizona Senior Olympics and I said, how come they don't have a pickleball there? And she says, well, you better get busy and organize it. <laughs> so that was kind of the kickoff and the start of, uh, of that. And this occurred at Happy Trails in Surprise, Washington, where there happened to be four courts. And we're talking about the years 2001 and going forward from there. And then later it, it uh, we had, we, after three years there, we moved it to our community at Arizona Traditions next door for the next, oh, five years or so. Uh, Norm Davis over here, he was a huge part of the ASO. He, uh, I did the on-court stuff and Norm did all the off-court stuff, parking, food, you name it. Uh, then Bob Lanius here, he, he came aboard there, uh, I guess it was probably in 05 or 06. And, and he moved us from the paper generation, you might say, into the computer world. So that was a huge step. And it was fun to associate with everybody and, and having such big numbers and so on. Uh, when we first uh, introduced the thought of pickleball in the Arizona Senior Olympics, of course, the people in the, official, in, uh, the city of Phoenix, they said, well, what's that kind of thing? And uh, so then we managed to get the uh, director out and uh, played some pickleball and she got a little bit enthused and went back to Gordon and several months later they reluctantly gave approval, a conditional approval if you would, and they said, well as long as you guarantee us that we'll have at least 15 players, uh, we can go forward with it. Well, within a few weeks uh, I had commitments from 40 people 
and then we had 100 in the first tournament. And uh, like I said, that was 2001. So that was the first, first big step, and it, it kind of involved into a, into a huge tournament after that, and ultimately ended up with the, uh, with the formation of the USAPA, and, and Mark and Fran and Barney, and a lot of people were thoroughly more involved in that in the beginning uh, than me. But I had this idea. I had seen enthusiasm from uh, players primarily at Happy Trails who were going back to their communities and starting pickleball. And I could see that people, some people, were very organized and very passionate about pickleball. And this is the driving force that people could work with just a $10 set of business cards and work independently uh, without any instruction, just on their own ambitions, just want to share this great game with everybody else and, and that's what drove it. So, and we had come up with the word ambassadors. We borrowed that a little bit from the, from the Huntsman program and, but we changed it and the, and the commitment was much greater. If you didn't know it at the very, very start, uh, that was when I, my hearing was half decent, uh, people would join USAPA and I would get a notice if it had a little comment on it, interested in the ambassador program. It had the person's name and phone number and city on it, and I would pick up the phone, and that was the application process, you might say, a verbal application, and we went forward from there. Kind of a funny little story, as, uh, as Jack mentioned, I grew up in northern Canada, and I was a hockey fan, and there was a good, pretty good goalie by the name of Gump Worsley, uh, and this is back in the 50s, and he played for the Saskatoon team, and I followed his career and he ended up playing goalie for the New York Rangers and also for uh, the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Anyway, so I get, a, I get a message that there's a Ken Worsley from Providence, Rhode Island. And he, wants, he plans to start pickleball, so I picked up the phone and in our conversation with him I found out that he had learned pickleball at the Villages. And I saw in due time, I asked him, well, do you happen to know Gump Worsley? It's a similar name. He says, oh yeah, he's kind of a second cousin of mine. And later on in the conversation, I asked him, well, whatever happened to Gump? And he says, well, he spent too much time in the penalty box. And I says, hey, wait a minute, he's a goalie. And he says, yeah, the penalty box is a bar in Providence. <laughs> so anyway, the things just kept going on from there. and. Uh, and uh, we just, within, I think it was about three years, we were up to a couple hundred ambassadors. And by that time, they, you know, these people were essentially all reporting to me. Not every day, they were working, like I say, independently. Uh, but still, I thought there had to be some kind of a structure. So I looked on the internet and saw how the USTA was doing things and found out that they had several regions throughout the country. So that was the beginning of the regional structure that we had. And from there on, it was uh, just pretty simple. It fed itself. Uh, uh, the regional directors were doing all the vetting by then. I was just doing a lot of the, the computer work and getting people assigned. And, but I was doing policies and, uh, and also uh, setting up job descriptions and just a lot of things that just kept it going. So uh, that's just a little bit of the early history of the ambassador program. And I thought you'd be interested in that. So I want to once again thank the committee and thank each and every one of you for all your support. And it's been a fun ride. Thank you very much. Chesapeake Bay, Virginia. Keith Beisel, who, remember that name because he belongs in history. He has taught over 5,000 people 
to play pickleball, and he kept their names. He's gone from one thousand trails to another. Thousand trails was something that in the RVing days, which spread pickleball like mad, uh, we followed it from one coast to the other. And in first in Florida for the first two years is where we wintered. And then we went to, in the summers, we went to Washington. And we took the La Conner in the by Labor Day for their tournament, which was normally just a, a meet, you know, you sign up and you all play with different partners, the partner switch situation, and it was fun. And then we moved down to uh, Verde Valley for Thanksgiving. And there's where we met Juanita and Carl, and Wayne and uh, Nancy Mudley, and ended up in Happy Trails. Happy Trails is where we met Earl Hill, because we were participants in the 2003 uh, Arizona Senior Games. Um, did great, played well. Uh, Bob does play pickleball. A lot of you have never seen him on the court, but he does play. And uh, we had a great time. But, you know, tournaments, Bob says, oh, I've got to get involved. And of course I did too. And so the next year we worked with Earl and said, oh, there's an easier way to do this. We got to get this computerized. So the net, we got the names and all. And I'll tell you, at that time you got the list of names the week before the event. So you had to, and then the day of the event, they come in and tell you that, oh, they don't have my name on here, but I know, I, here's my receipt, I registered. And so then, you know, Bob would put it in the computer and rewrite the charts. That was the beginning of pickleballtournaments.com. It was the beginning of what you know today. And now, Melissa McCurley, who has taken over our dedication after all the years, uh, will tell you what it has meant to her and what Bob means to her. Yeah, um, so I wasn't prepared to do this, by the way. I've been running a national tournament uh, for the past few days. Um, so I'm uh, just going to speak to you guys, uh, certainly from my heart. Um, when I met Jetty in 2014, I didn't know who Bob Lanius was. Um, and I didn't know who Jetty was either. I uh, was working for American Express. Uh, running the IT department there for all of the global and voice networks, uh, doing pretty well. And then uh, my mom asked me to play in a pickleball tournament, and I said, sure, why not? And so I did, and then as a result of that tournament, I was asked to come out and play in El Mirage, which many of you may know, that's where the Grand Canyon State Games have been hosted, and Bob and Jetty had been running that event for quite some time. Uh, Jetty asked me what I was doing with pickleball. I gave her a little bit, which wasn't much, by the way. Uh, I just didn't have a lot of time. And that's when she said, well, my husband and I have this program called pickleballtournaments.com. Uh, would you be interested in talking to us about that? And I said, sure, why not? And it was because of my uh, background in, in IT. So when people ask me, well, Melissa, how did you get involved with pickleballtournaments.com? I tell them I wasn't looking for it it found me. And so um, I then got on the phone and talked to Bob. He told me a little bit about the program. He said, you've got to get to California in two weeks. He says, we're running a tournament out there. Uh, actually, it was uh, Dennis Dacey and Gail Dacey that were running it. So I went out and I saw for the first time what this program was about. And I was truly fascinated by it. Uh, what someone could do in 10 years plus of dedication building not only a system, but processes and tools and standards behind that system that would truly change the face of pickleball tournaments and competition forever. If it is not for what this man does and what the support of his wife gives him over that period of time, 
We are not exploding the sport through tournaments. We're not here in this beautiful tennis facility of Indian Wells. We're not in places like the US Open. We're not running 11 regions that are now qualifying people to come to a USAPA national tournament. So Bob, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I work hard every day to take your legacy forward and make you and Jenny proud. Thank you for what you've done for this sport. of his contribution to the sport of pickleball by creating and developing the pickleballtournaments.com software which enabled the growth of tournaments worldwide with online registration and administration. In addition, Robert was the commissioner of the Arizona Senior Olympics and Grand Canyon State Games for many years. He also created one of the first club websites that featured news, places to play, and tournaments with match results from around the country. Robert. Thank you. Welcome. She's my social director. My history is a computer person. I'm one of those infamous little nerds in the back room. I'm, this is not my comfort zone. If I have to do it, I do it. And back in 2003, as she mentioned, we started playing the ASO games. We've been trying to do tournaments up in Washington and everything. So we were the type of people that kind of get involved. And back in 2004, I came along to Earl Hill, that you've heard from, and we saw the problems as far as the things happening at games. As Jenny mentioned, we had people showing up at the tournaments. They had their registration paper, but they weren't on the charts. This is something that could be solved. We could fix the problem. It shouldn't happen. And I essentially at that time was also, as Jenny mentioned, working with Happy Trails, create their website, and we would put the results of tournaments up on the web. By 2005, we were putting not just the medal winners up on the web, but all the results. What did that involve? It's like being at Huntsman Games. If Don Oda was here, we were out there in RVs, and in the evening, after everything was done, it was go over with a flashlight, write it down on a piece of paper, and then go back and put it in the computer and get up on the web. Everybody came to us, and what I tell people is, I got the warm fuzzies back. We love the warm fuzzies and thank yous. People said, we've never seen this before. Can you get us the results up there? We want live results and everything. And by about 2009, and what I talk about in those days, and Jetty mentioned it, was that we as tournament directors, and anybody that comes to us, and I, they come to us and say, we want to run a tournament, I say, you need to run it the first couple of years by hand. If you don't run it by hand, you don't know the problems that come up. When you run a tournament and something goes wrong, the computer's not going to tell you what went wrong. You need to have the detective skills. Melissa's got that. What went wrong? Was it the referee that filled out the score sheet because he turned it upside down wrong and it was totally backwards? Or what? You've got to figure it out to figure out the thing. The computer's not going to solve it for you. So you need to run the tournament and know the flow of information. The computer is a tool. And what we provided over, it was 10 years of development, over 10 years of development, was a tool that helps the tournament directors do everything. By 2009, it, not everything, we don't have, 
you know, essentially uh, uh, affecting the player's ratings yet. And that's what's happening now. But in 2009, we stuck our, I stuck my neck out because I was in a position, I'd taken over ASO, and it was like, I've got this computer, I'm entering the scores every night. At the end of the day, take everything back, take the charts, what happened, put in the scores, and come up with the, you know, the, essentially the results so we could post them every night. The computer knew who was supposed to be playing the next match. And by 2009, it's like, I'm a tournament director, I can stick my neck out, and I can have the computer automatically print out the score sheets for the next match. You put in the results, the computer can do this. Why? Because I sitting there as a tournament director, we saw a desk, people doing it by hand. I'm sorry, they make mistakes. They still make mistakes today. So let's have the computer do it. And again, you've got to understand today, you're almost 10 years at later. We are at a time when there was internet and wireless was at its beginning. We ran the first nationals, USAPA nationals. It wasn't live on the internet. We had to take a server out there because the internet, the wireless service wasn't reliable. So we take a server out there they run it there and then upload everything at night so everything, everybody will see the results tonight. Again, you get the warm fuzzies back. We need to do more. What we needed to do for the tournament directors was to get online registration. Imagine, and most tournament directors take this week's tournament. Can you imagine being a tournament director or the registration people and getting 2,000 plus registrations on paper with the checks and everything else and trying to enter everything and get it right. This is what we, not 2,000, for us it was a lot back to three, 400 people. And Jenny and I would spend an afternoon entering Arizona Senior Olympics or entering Grand Canyon State Games for our online registration. So it was enter all this stuff and get it right, and you end up with player John playing with, saying he's playing with Bill, but Bill was playing with somebody else in the same event. <laughs> this, this was what Pickleball Terminus was designed. It, it is unique in the world to manage the players and the registrations, and everything goes on, everything else that tries to go on with the tournament. It, is unique and that can be customized for every tournament. One underlying thing was pickleballtournaments.com was made for everybody. It was not made for the Senior Olympics. It was not made for the state games. It was not, hello. It was not made for any one particular organization. The problem with that is it can be adjusted for everybody and there's a lot of options and it can be complicated and you have to have somebody capable to take over that system in 2014 we found somebody that had the energy that wanted to take take the step forward jetty and i at this point it needed to become a business understand we were working basically off donations at that time any donations that came to us paid for equipment. I tell you, hello. Do we don't we need a new iPad? Hello. And don't we need a new cell phone? Or don't we need a new LED TV? Because these were things we bought to test out stuff at tournaments. You know, with the first, you see the displays, they're not great right now. Again. Everything can be solved with some money. You see all these big displays at tournaments? It costs money. Well, we could pick up all tournaments could do that to display the information. But we had to work on the money that was available. And that was the same thing for us. But it was like, Jetty, don't you need a new cell phone? Because we need to test out to make sure pickupballtournaments.com will work on it. And it was made to work on all platforms, not that you had to go and get Chrome or some other type of software. So all this led forward, and by 2014, 
it needed to become a business, and thankfully, Melissa came along and was the person to take the reins and move forward with the system. And Jenny and I stepped back, and Melissa's carrying everything forward. But everything started back with Earl. We were all coming back from the, that generation as far as Earl, Fran, Barney, Jenny and I, and everything as far as tournaments, and working together to promote pickleball. So I have this list of people that I have to thank. Number one, Jenny mentioned him, Keith Weissel. He was the one that she said, has taught us, taught us. I don't know whether to thank him or not, because he got us into this. <laughs> Earl Hill, back, you, you go back to Earl Hill, uh, Arizona Senior Olympics, and he was the one, I don't know whether to blame him or thank him, because when it got around to, hey, I want to put the charts, on the results on the computer for everybody, he said, well, here are the blank ones and here are the names. You fill them in. And this was the night before, every day. I think, I think he's a very smart guy because he offloaded all that work into me. And as a computer person, I'll do it first by hand once, but not again, never again. And that's where pickleball tournaments came out. Fran and Barney Meyer were there from the beginning supporting us. We all work together. Dennis Dewey at the, and, and Fran and Barney Meyer and Dennis Dewey are from the first USAPA Nationals. They were held in festival. Uh, John Gello was TOC. Uh, Don Walker was the president of Happy Trails, got me into, back in the computer work doing that, kind of retired from. And Bob Clarick and Ken Schoonover. Bob Clarick and Schoonover from, that worked with Huntsman. Huntsman. Don Odell and Ken Schoonover from Huntsman. And then I have to thank Melissa. She got it, took over the system and is running with it. And Jetty, my wife, she's the one, you know, she's been by my side all along, and she's the one that's been there from the beginning telling me, come to bed, or why are you up in the middle of the night? So thank you very much. And I want to thank the Pickleball Hall of Fame Committee for the inductees. Mike doesn't like me. I want to thank the Pickleball Hall of Fame Committee for the inductees this year. I'm proud and honored to be a member of this group and this recognition of the dedicated volunteers and the endless hours of, wait, of work never seen by most of the players and everybody else. So thank you very much. as you've listened to the other two, it's pretty darn awesome what all of these inductees have accomplished. And um, we ain't seen nothing yet compared to the explosion in the sport. Fran was born in Seattle. So she was a local gal up there. And I thought it was kind of interesting. She graduated from the University of uh, Washington. But did you know that she used to have classical ballet? Now, that was a long time ago. I won't tell when, but she has a background of classical ballet. And then when she went into high school, she couldn't really participate in the regular sports because she had a back brace because of back problem. And after some um, tests, they discovered she had one leg a little shorter than the other. So in order to finish the PE requirements then, she did the swimming and the bowling. So it's, it's interesting when you look at the backgrounds of each of our athletes or each of our inductees. I'm going to fast forward way over to 1999. She was working for a company in Washington as, a, I think, a receptionist. And she's supposed to answer the phone and kind of just take care of things. Well, the phone never rang. 
So she said to her boss, well, what do you want me to do? And he goes, well, I don't know, just sit there and read a magazine in case the phone does ring. Well, that doesn't work very well for Fran because she's one of these gals that is going to utilize all her time. So she thought, well, what could I do and use my time the best while I'm sitting here? Well, that was at the beginning when people were starting to create websites. So she decided, I'll go on the internet and I'm going to learn how to create a website because I play pickleball and maybe I can put something together to help everybody. So she went through the process of teaching herself how to create the website, which we all know now as Pickleball Stuff. And that was created because she thought it'd be kind of neat that you'd have one place to maybe get paddles and the balls, you kind of know what size the pickleball court was, because nobody knew that, how to build a court, and places to play. So she did accomplish this, and this is why she called it Pickleball Stuff, so that people could get it on the internet. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Now we go on and we roll on to the year 2002. Now 2002 we've talked about because this was the year of the ASO, Arizona Senior Olympics. So she and Barney thought it would be really cool to come down and participate in the tournament. Bob and I happened to be at this tournament. This was our first tournament. Bob and I had no idea really what a pickleball tournament was, but it sounded fun. And we got there and they said, you know, we're going to be stopping about 2 o'clock. There's something special going on. So don't everybody leave. I go, well, that's kind of interesting because coming from tennis, you just go and you play. You don't really have any intermissions. Well, it ended up that there was going to be a wedding. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting, a pickleball wedding. And we have photos, and you can see a couple of them out in the front if you haven't taken a peek of them. Um, some of the photos that I took on 2002. For Barney and Fran, and she was in a cute little outfit with a little shirt and the little white lace socks and the little veil. And, and um, they decided they would get married, but they didn't plan to get married in the pickleball course. She happened to mention to Earl Hill and you see this connection so many years ago with many of us, that they might get married and maybe they'd go to Wickenburg or they'd go to Phoenix, you know, after the tournament. And Earl said, you know, let me think about this. Let me get back to you. So he and Gladys, AKA Blanche, that's my favorite name, but Gladys and Earl decided that it would be more appropriate for them to get married on the courts. And so that's what we did. And I thought that was pretty darn cool. First documented pickleball wedding on the courts. We had the paddle, um, you know how you hold the paddles up and they went through. And there was music and cake and all that. And then the announcer says, okay, it's time for the mixed doubles final. Would Barney and Fran Meyer please go to court two, along with Bev and Bob Youngren? And I said to my husband, they just got married. We're gonna go out and play doubles. So I said to Fran, Fran, you, you bask in the glory of being married. We'll play tomorrow. Oh no, she said. We didn't want this to interrupt. So we went on and we played. And that's kind of a fun memory, but I'll tell you about that later. So anyway, what's interesting, I learned a new word, palindrome. I don't know if you guys know what that means, but palindrome for Barney and Fran was they got married on 02-20-2002 on court two at two o'clock. Oh. I think that's pretty cool. Barney joined the business with the pickleball stuff and they both had regular jobs there in Seattle. And because of the passion of pickleball, they would end up doing the pickleball stuff at night, just like Bob was doing it at night. And it's just crazy when you look back on the passion of all these players and, and, and the heart that, and the time and the the energy they put in to promote this wonderful sport. In Pickleball, Steph, and that was the only business around at that time, they would send product out to all over the United States, to Canada, Cyprus, Singapore, Guam, Kenya, and Fiji. Now this is 2002 to, I'm not even sure, but this is way before what we're familiar with now. One of the things that Fran wanted 
in her sight was to have places to play. So in 2003, there were 39 places to play. Can you imagine that? You could go onto the internet and find 39 places. How many places do we have to play today, 2018? I didn't count, I didn't have time, but I know there's a lot. So the bottom line for my dear friend Fran with the passion that she has is that she felt that everybody should know about pickleball. And her hope was that someday she could go anywhere and find a game of pickleball. And that she has done. And I thank you for being my friend and I am so very proud that you are going to be the inductee. Now I'm gonna share the microphone and I'm gonna have Mark Friedenberg come up and tell you a little bit more about Fran. Fran, I want to welcome you to the Hall of Fame, and I'm sure that Barney is looking down upon you right now, smiling and very proud of you. I met Fran in 1990, I believe. I got CRS, so sometimes I can't remember the exact date. But uh, we met at the SeaTac Community Center in SeaTac, Washington. And I used to play on Tuesday night with the big dogs. In fact, I think I first met Pat Kane there, too, if anybody knows Pat Kane. We yeah. do. Okay. But anyway, uh, there's Fran and Barney there, and Fran is running around like a chicken with his head cut off, smacking the ball all over the place. And Barney, God, he's diving all over the court for balls. He's crazy. Two crazy people. But uh, it, was, it was fun to watch them. And the biggest thing about them is they were laughing, they were smiling, and having fun. In fact, uh, later in the 90s, I asked Fran to play in a C uh, not a C-TAC tournament, in a uh, <coughs> Washington State tournament, Washington State Senior Games tournament. And I said, hey, Fran, Let's win this tournament. And she gave me the stink eye. <laughs> she said, Mark, I just want to have fun. And that really hit home to me. Because I'm all about winning many, most of the time. But you know, it's winning, you can't win all the time. And it's really important to have fun. If you don't have fun in this game, you have, you'll have to take up something else. Uh, speaking about fun, Fran, I have to tell this story. <laughs> Fran teamed up with uh, another little feisty woman named Leela Reed. And they would always bash the ball around the court, laughing, having fun. And they did win some medals. And they earned a nickname. Now, I don't know who coined the phrase for him, but they were called the Mighty Midgets. <laughs> and the reason why they were called the Mighty Midgets, well, Fran's five foot. I think you're still five foot, I'm not sure. Four foot nine? <laughs> anyway, Fran was five foot, and Leela, she'd always be bragging that she was the tallest of the two. Well, she was five foot, one quarter inch. But that's not all. Every time they get on the court, they're back to back, measuring each other, seeing who's the tallest. Okay. Here's some, some of Fran's accomplishments. Fran has received over 200 awards and medals. She is a USAPA national champion, get this, in the 19 plus division. She won gold. And she's won some silvers. Fran has served on the USAPA board as secretary, media director, and as vice president for eight years. And that's a significant accomplishment if you know the USAPA board. <laughs> uh, 
two significant accomplishments or, or contributions to the USAPA that she is responsible for is that she developed the USAPA mission statement to develop and grow pickleball nationally and internationally. But the most important contribution that she made with Barney, who was the director of tournaments, was the national tournament, the USAPA national tournament, 2009. Look at it now. Look how it's grown in nine years. A couple more accomplishments. Fran and Barney were co-commissioners of the Washington State Senior Games and the Greater Seattle Senior Games for nine years. And last but not least, Fran helped me start the SeaTac tournaments. And of course, that's SeaTac Washington. And it contained a lot of big dogs there. And we, we lasted for 2006 to 2000, rather from 2006 to 2014, twice a year. Thank you, Fran. I think it's time for Fran to come up and receive the, her rewards. in recognition of her contribution to the sport of pickleball by creating Pickleball Stuff in 1999, the first informational and retail website selling equipment from all manufacturers. During eight years of service as a charter member of the USAPA board, she was secretary, media director, and vice president. She co-directed the first USAPA National Tournament with Barney Meyer in 2009, then with Dennis Dewey in 2010 and 2011. She and Barney were Washington State Senior Game Commissioners for nine years and the Greater Seattle Senior Games for eight years. Fran, congratulations. through trying times, to the many friends I've made, and the hundreds of inspiring stories I've heard through my 30 plus years of being involved in pickleball. The health benefits. Did I say the health benefits? It has truly given me more than I can ever give back. But I don't feel that I can take all the credit for this wonderful honor because it's been the inspiration and vision of those around me that are responsible for my being here today. First, the three most important people in my life, my three daughters. They really inspired me to be a good role model. When my youngest daughter was six, she had an assignment at her first grade class, and that was to write about what her mom does while she's at school all day. So I really look forward to reading her paper. And she came home, I opened up her piece of paper, she had five words written on it. My mom washes the dishes. Uh, <laughs> so I worked hard 
at being a better role model. And I think it's quite extraordinary that I've gone from washing dishes all day to now being in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I give credit to all the people in my life who I have had the good fortune to be associated with. And I say good fortune because how lucky to have friends like Andrea, Paul, and Wanda, and a crazy cousin like Rowella, and all my pickleball family, because it wasn't my intent to do much of what I'm being given credit for. I feel kind of like Forrest Gump. You know how he kind of did things through life and then it grew into some big thing that he got this extraordinary credit for? I feel kind of like that. Because it wasn't my intention to start a business selling pickleball stuff. I just wanted everyone to learn about this game. And my dream, like Bev said, was to be able to go anywhere and find a game of pickleball. And now my dream has been realized. As I drive through places like Wenatchee, Washington, Ashland, Oregon, Tustin, Pacific Beach and Capitola, California, Hartford, Connecticut, Scotia, New York, there they are, people playing pickleball and inviting me to come and join them. So that is just so amazing. Um, and I think those 30 to 40 people back in 1999 who asked where they could buy pickleball stuff. I thank them for giving me the idea that I could actually sell pickleball stuff. It was not my intention to be part of an organization that now governs pickleball, but Mark Friedenberg's vision included me as one of the charter board members of the USAPA. We were just like a ragtag bunch of pickleball fanatics trying to help Mark realize his dream. So I thank you, Mark, for inviting me to be part of the beginning of USAPA and part of USAPA history. It certainly was not my intention to be married on the pickleball court, <laughs> but at Earl Hill's insistence, it happened. I'm not sure how he pulled it off because we only gave him a budget of $100. But with $100, he managed to have cake and punch for everybody and even some pickleball decorations. And of course, many of you know that much of what I did to promote pickleball would not have happened without Barney Meyer. He deserves a lot of the credit for the recognition given to me today. Nine years of being commissioners for the Washington State Senior Games, eight years of being commissioners for the Northwest Senior Games would not have happened without our partnership. We were a team working on the tournaments. We were a team working on pickleball stuff business. And we were a team working on the USAPA board. And I'm really glad you mentioned the fact that Barney was the first director of the USAPA National Tournament in 2009. I think he would be quite amazed at how this tournament has grown and that it is now here at the Indian Wells Tennis Garden. So I thank Barney. And I accept this honor in recognition of his contribution to it. I thank all the people who have inspired me through the years with their great stories. People like Bernie Merrifield. You remember Bernie? Yeah. He survived having a fist-sized tumor removed from his brain, which was then followed by a stroke. And then while he was recovering, he fell and broke several ribs. But he returned to pickleball 18 months later to win a medal in the Washington State Senior Games. People like Brenda Martell from Canada. I had the honor of refereeing one of her singles matches. And I watched her spin around, run for lobs, and chase down balls. And it looked like she had an injured knee. But when she came closer to me, I realized she didn't have a knee injury. She had a prosthetic leg. So to cancer survivors, heart attack victims, those who've recovered from hip replacements, knee replacements, rotator cuff repairs, back surgeries, kidney transplants, and more, they've all fought to come back so they could play pickleball. You are my heroes and part of the reason I'm here. 
This honor goes to everyone who has inspired me and included me in your vision. I thank you all for the part you have played in my nomination and selection. Whether you are a tournament player, a recreational player, beginner or seasoned veteran of the game, I hope we can all continue to play for many, many more years for the great exercise, the competition, the camaraderie, for the fun, for meeting new friends, and most importantly, did I say for the health benefits? <laughs> Do it for the health benefits. So thank you, Seymour Rifkin. Thank you to the Pickleball Hall of Fame and Organizing Committee for hosting this very special event. And thank all of you for being here tonight. I know we've, uh, many of us will be competing tomorrow. Uh, in closing, I'd like to first ask all three of our inductees to come out so that uh, everybody out in the audience can take pictures of this outstanding class. Uh, those of you that are competing, I want you to, and if you've enjoyed this evening, please spread the word about the Pickleball Hall of Fame. This is here too. We're hoping that uh, this event continues to grow. We're hoping that we can get a lot of the younger players to understand the history of the game. The people that were really the ones that brought this game, the love that I know all of us share, uh, and really are more family than any other sport I've ever been involved with. So encourage the younger generation to participate in this event, to learn about the Trailblazers, and uh, let's just continue to have this wonderful event and recognition of those that are so worthy to be recognized each and every year. Bob is credited as the original creator of the PickleballTournaments.com software, which enabled the growth of pickleball tournaments worldwide. In fact, his software is being used for this year's Margaritaville USA Pickleball National Championships. In addition, Bob was the commissioner for the Arizona Senior Olympics and the Grand Canyon State Games for many years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2018 Pickleball Hall of Fame inductee, Bob Lanius. of his contribution to the sport of pickleball is a charter member of the USAPA board. Earl is credited as the founder of the USAPA ambassador program. Earl served for 13 years as the original ambassador director and also served as the Arizona Senior Olympics pickleball commissioner from 2001 to 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Earl Hill. supermodel. Fran served eight years as a charter member of the USAPA Board of Directors, serving as secretary, media director, and ultimately vice president. Fran and her late husband Barry Meyer actually co-directed the first ever USAPA National Championships and then co-directed the tournament again in 2010 and 2011. She was also the Washington State Senior Games Commissioner for nine years and the Greater Seattle Senior Games Commissioner for eight years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2018 Pickleball Hall of Fame inductee, Fran Meyer. Once more, let's give a final round of applause for the 2018 Class of Pickleball Hall of Fame. 